lot of people are talking about it at Web Summit 2014 for a big trend for 2015, yet we've not seen as many people doing it. But here on behalf of Aerotronics is Lucas. How are you, Lucas? Yeah, fine. Actually, yeah, good. Which country is your, is your business based out of, Lucas? Well, uh, our headquarters is in uh, the Netherlands, near Amsterdam. Cool, so uh, getting high is kind of a native, <laughs> a native business idea for many years. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. drugs pun out of the way. Looking at the drone right here, why don't you just work us through top to bottom exactly what we're dealing with here in terms of materials and some hardware applications. Yeah, so actually the drone you see here is a dummy because we're not allowed to fly here. Um, but it's a uh, like a full carbon frame. So you, you have the hard carbon frame on the top. Under the hood, we have a uh, flight computer that can do calculations up to 1,000 times a second. You know, Checking all its sensors, like the GPS that you see here on top. And um, uh, then from all the data that it gets from the sensors, you know, it goes to a filter, it's called a Kalman filter, and then it sends the, uh, the actions towards the motors. Yeah, and then the motors spin up or spin down. And by doing that, you control the vehicle. You can turn it, you can fly forward and backward. And we were talking to, uh, to a number of folks about drones, and uh, like we've not seen as many. Uh, in terms of applications, your company is quite established. You're saying 30, 35 people. Have you started selling these already? If so, who to and how are they using them? Yeah, so we have already selling uh, these systems to different markets. So for example, uh, for example, public safety. So to the police, to fire departments, you know, to detect fires, uh, to have an overview of fires um, and search and rescue missions. Um, and then also to the inspection industry. Uh, so one of our customers, for example, is T-Mobile. Uh, they use it to check their... Uh, phone masts, you know, and uh, do inspections on them. You know, they get to places that are either dangerous or difficult to get to. So and that, that makes their work more efficient. And in agriculture, which is also a very huge market, you know, with using multispectral cameras, you can filter out different wavelengths and then say something about your crop health. And you can then also manage your resources better. So spraying water, uh, pesticides, or even uh, fertilizer, you know, can be more directed to the areas that actually need needed. That's incredible. What I've noticed about drones is obviously there's been, there's been a lot of talk. I've been seeing them in yeah. numerous countries over the years, uh, maybe not as much in action. But what I do like about the conversation in 2015 around drones is that the technology is quite developed. Tell me about how long this can fly, how high, how far, what are its hardware capabilities? Well, it depends on the type of system. So this is a, this is a multi-rotor system. So you will see flight times, depending on payloads, between 15 minutes and 45 minutes. That's, that's a bit the scope. So the limiting factor is actually the battery. Yeah. So, but the battery technology is, you know, is improving. You know, car industry is, you know, with with Tesla, and so they put a lot of energy and effort in improving battery technology. So, um, you see these improvements. What you see also with these systems is that the hardware level, you know, the the, the readiness of the system, uh, we're getting to a level where this system is very safe and secure, and the hardware is, you know, at a level that it's okay. So then we start moving into the software again. Right? That's why we're here at the. Uh, Web, uh, web Summit, because we've created a platform on which you can develop your own apps. Yeah? So, for example, you could have an app for checking of uh, wind turbines, you know, and then the system will, in the end, uh, you know, follow the, follow the structure of the uh, wind turbine, collect the data, send the data to the cloud, process the data, and gives the report to the end user. So, as we move, you know, when you look at technology, especially progressive technology, even examples like BlackBerry, as it makes its way down from business and industry mm -hmm. to more and more consumers. What are the trends that you're predicting 2015, 2016, 2017, as these end up in the hands of more and more uh, lay people and children and so on? Yeah, yeah. So, so legislation is, is, is one of the limiting factors at the moment. Yeah? So we're in a small UAV coalition, for example, in the US, together with uh, uh, companies like Google and Amazon and um, to get actually a good climate for a safe climate for these uh, systems to operate in. So what you will see in the future is, is more and more businesses started using these systems, you know, and, and, and their business, driving their business by using these systems. And from a consumer point of view, you know, you will have probably in a couple of years, you will have a plumber that has a small, media, a small size drone, you know, in his back pocket, and he uses this drone to check the roof, you know. Uh, for, 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 for if there are any defects on a roof. So without him climbing up on the roof and taking the risk. But, so it will be, you know, we're talking today about wearables here. Uh, drones will be wearable at, uh, at some stage. And one area that I probably know, I mean, many people know I know the least about, what's the future of drones in sport? I mean, can you see like a drone games where they've got to shoot lasers on each other? I don't know, whatever it could be. But is there, a, is there, a, is there an element of that where drones could humans and drones could compete against each other? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, y you have people, there was a, a nice clip on YouTube uh, just a couple of weeks ago about people racing drones through the woods, 
which which was from the drone perspective very nice. People also there's a nice uh, uh, a startup uh, on Kickstarter that 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 has drones that follow you around when you do your extreme sports. So for example, surfing or skiing or so you see a lot of cool stuff happening actually and taking the platform and using it for different types of applications. And of course, um, VCs are difficult guys to find at these kind of events, but I'm sure that you must have been approached by quite a few because there's, there's not many people doing this that well. What's the, uh, what's the finance and the private equity and the, the angel community, how have they been in terms of uh, approaching your, your response to, their response to you approaching them? Well, what you've seen uh, last year, there have been a lot of uh, tech startups uh, in drone business in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley and also a lot of interest in, uh, from VCs. So you have a lot of VCs that, that see that they want to do something with drones. But it's not only with the systems itself, but also in the data processing, that, you know, because it's going to be a big data problem, you know. And on the other hand, also on the sensors and on the sensor, uh, the processing of the sensor data, etc. So, so there you see a whole range of um, different businesses, um, which all, you know, uh, are getting funded now at the moment. Now, these businesses, do you think there's a heavy orientation towards intellectual property and patents, or is it is it true to, is it tr is it true application where the opportunity is? Yeah, well, I think patents will always be uh, will be always be around. But what you see as well is that, you know, like Tesla, they opened up all, all their patents to everybody to use, um, especially with the young generation, which most of the people are who are in this business. Um, it's more sharing and 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 be good at what you what you are, you know, and, 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 and specialize in that without too much focus on patents. All right, well, Lucas, thank you so much for that insight. It's very difficult to get an industrial opinion and get some real hands-on uh, expertise. So very grateful. If you need any more information, check out the link in the show notes below. And of course, you can check out all the interviews from Web Summit 2014 by subscribing to youtube.com forward slash Media Tech Social. Thank you so much, Lucas, and thanks for checking us out.